Today is Wednesday, June 26, 2013, and this is the start of an interview with George Gross at his home on Davis Road in Hopkinton, Mass. I'm Nancy Clark, interviewer for the Oral History Project, and this interview will become part of Hopkinton's verbal memories and history for current and future residents. George has lived in town since 1953, about 60 years. And I'd like to start out, George, by asking you um, your age and your date of birth so people can have a frame of reference. My age? 80. All right, you're 80 years old, so you were born in 1933. Mm -hmm. And let's start with what brought you to Hopkinton, how you happened to come here. How I happened to come here uh, was the fact that uh, I come out here to live out here because I was going to be marrying a girl from South Carolina. And we didn't want to go back into the city of Boston where I came from. Okay. And I've been here since. And we were together for quite a long time, but we did get divorced. Right. And, and I, don't, I don't remember exactly when at this point, but uh, she's in Framingham now and I'm out here. And fortunately, I do have a very, very fine. Well, I wouldn't call her a replacement, but she's a wonderful girl to be with. Wonderful woman. Nice, she's, nice. She's 79. That's excellent. And you told me uh, previously that you lived on, you settled on Parker Point Road. That's right. Um, if you could talk a little bit about what you did for a living back then, where you worked. Okay, basically, the most of my life I worked as an accountant in various places. And uh, I was deeply involved in the military, I mean, not the military, the fire department, the firefighting, for a good. Uh, I'd say a good 30 years or more. Because I did 30, 30, 30 odd years in Hopkinton. But I had also been involved in it back in Boston where I lived before I came out here. Okay. And focusing on Hopkinton and your work for the fire department, can you talk a little bit about the size of the fire department, the structure of the fire department back then in, back the, then. in the 50s, 60s, etc.? Well, just let me spell it out this way. I lived in Woodville. And when I first moved in here, they had a little firehouse in Woodville, built right on the corner of, uh, well, across, kind of across the street from where it is now. And uh, single engine in there, and there were about five or six people that ran with it if they wanted, if they needed it. And uh, they built the street at the firehouse across the street shortly after I moved in here put apparatus in there and they developed and put a bigger crew than we had. And uh, up here in the main station only had one building. I don't know, when did you move in the town? In the mid 80s. In the 80s, okay, so you wouldn't remember any of this. I don't think. But anyway, if you stand in front of that firehouse across the street now and you look at it, in the middle, you got three big doors. That was the station. The other two have been additions since then. So that's how much it's grown. And uh, I did, well, I think roughly, probably a good 30 years. And I enjoyed every minute of it. And you know, to me, every time we went out the door, Somebody needed help, and that was the biggest thing that kept me going. And actually, in my entire life, I did about 47 years of firefighting. And the other part of it was in Boston before I moved out here, and I got most of my training and so forth in there. But uh, when I came out, I was at the opportunity. You know, no matter what you go out that door for, somebody needs you. That's the way I always looked at it. And the, what would the number of, of full-time employees in the fire department have been? I'm assuming it was volunteer. When I, when I first came out here? Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't have any full-timers in Woodville. And I think we had, when I first moved out here, I think we had uh, the chief and maybe six other people as full-timers. Yes. While the rest of it was part-time, all men as they are. And how today, would, today it's quite a bit different. How would you have gotten the call um, if you were a volunteer firefighter to go to Radio. the site? Yeah. 
In fact, I still have a radio and I don't use it much anymore. But, uh, if they got something going out, they put it right across the, uh, the system and broadcast it, tell you exactly where it's going to be. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I always, in the back of my mind, I might have been called to go right across the street. But it's more important I go to a fire station to get the truck to make sure it's coming up. Mm -hmm. And I had, I, I don't know, it just, something I got involved in when I was about 17 or 18 years old in Boston. And uh, I loved it. No matter what I did, where we did, where we went. And of course, in the city of Boston, that's a much bigger thing than it ever thought of me. And uh, I don't know how I first got involved in it out here, except that uh, when I moved into Woodville and I saw the firehouse down there, I kind of laughed and chuckled to myself. I said, wait, you know, this wouldn't even be thought of in Boston. <laughs> Until, uh, I had a call one day for something. I found out how fast they got here, as it was. And, uh, it's been, the fire department right now is probably five times the size that it was when I first came here. But to me, no matter what you want out for, somebody needed your help. Can you remember any and big that's, calls? That's one of the ways that I always faithfully, always looked at it from that viewpoint. Mm -hmm. And I didn't care whether it was 2 o'clock in the morning or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. They needed you, you went. Can you remember any mm -hmm. big fires, any big calls that you were on over the, well, the there's, decades? There's been a few of them. There's been a few of them. And, uh, yeah. uh, one of them was right in the center of town. Building is still there today, but uh, uh, I'm trying to think of what's in it now. If you're going beyond the firehouse, you go through the traffic like the first street on the left, which I can't think of the name of. Walcott well, Valley? Or? And uh, the building that was right on the corner. Mm -hmm. And boy, when we got up there, that thing was just it's like a big torture, you wouldn't believe what we saw. It. it took a long time, five, six, eight hours to put it out. And there's been others that come and go. And, uh, a lot of times you get very active is when there's lightning flying around. Because mm -hmm. that can start almost anything. Yeah. And I just, I've spent all together between my entire life, somewhere around 46 years of firefighting. Mm -hmm. And about, about 30 of it was here. Mm -hmm. um, going back over the years, do you remember um, any Fire chiefs in particular? Well, when I first came here, out the steward was chief. And uh, I don't remember his name, the one that had been there before him. Uh, when, you know, when I first came around, when I first, when I first came around, mm -hmm. I can't think of his name, Pine. Joe Pine, yes. Joe Pine, I think mm -hmm. it was. Who unfortunately died in a fire in his house. I don't know if you know that or not. I did, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so that was one of the first things I got involved in. I just couldn't believe what I was seeing and hearing. And at that time, we only had the two stations, which we still only have two, although on the pier it's quite a bit different. Yes, and much larger. Mm -hmm. uh, Do you have recollections, since we're on sort of the town departments, of the police department over the years? Well, when you first came here in 1953. Well, when I first came here, as, as far as going out like that, it was just strictly the fire department, where I was concerned. Because I had done it in Boston and so forth before I came out this morning. Yeah. And uh, the way I always looked at it, I didn't care if it was in the middle of a blizzard, if it was 3 o'clock in the morning, somebody needed your help. Right. right. And our police department was probably fairly small also. At that time, yeah. Back then. <laughs> but, when I first came into town, as I mentioned before, the firehouse only had the three doors that are right in the middle now. And one little one on the left hand side, that used to be the police station. Before they moved across the street. I don't know when they moved across the street at the point, I don't know. But that's what used to be the police station now. Um, Interesting. To me, being a firefighter or whatever it is, somebody always needed your help when we had to go. I didn't care what, how long it took or anything. But I just had many years of it. Yeah. 
Good. The um, best I could do to help people. Oh, I'm sure you did. It was wonderful that you worked for the fire department. Um, let's move on sort of to, to family life in Hopkinton in the 1950s and 60s and beyond when you were I, I raising can, your, your family. I came out here a newly married person. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what was Parker Point Road like back then? It's Parker Point Road, like then, same as it is today. Okay. Yeah, there's been no more, well, there's been one addition or two additions put in and taken out. And uh, I always enjoyed being down there. It was nice, it was out of the way, it was peaceful, quiet, and there were about 15 houses on Parker Point Road, mm -hmm. and that was it. And uh, got to know quite a few of the people, I had a good time working down there. And periodically during the summertime, you never know whose backyard you were going to end up in, shoot the breeze, have a picnic or something. And, uh, so that's the only place that I lived before it came up here. Before you came to Davis yeah, Road, yeah. Yeah. Do you remember in particular any of the names of some of the families who lived either on Parker Point Road or in Woodville? I know there's a lot of old time Hopkinton families in Woodville. <clears throat> you would help me with that one. <laughs> That's fine. No, it's fine. It's fine. You said that you. Um, there was a Frank Edmonds across the street. And his son, one of his sons lived on the other side of the street. There was a doctor that lived up there, but he was active somewhere else. I can't think. I can't remember most of the names. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. I, so there's, there's no one that you can remember that still yeah, is in Hopkinton that. that you've yeah. kept up with yeah. over the years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned that you'd oftentimes end up in somebody's backyard having barbecues or whatever. Parker Point Road is fairly close to Lake Whitehall. Right? Yeah, it's right, it's right by now. What do you remember about Lake Whitehall at the time? And, and I'm curious if, if that has changed. You the Whitehall, when you drive around and go by it, is a much bigger lake than you realize mm. until you get out on the water. And I don't remember what year I did this, but for some reason I just decided to buy a boat kit and build a 16 foot boat, which I did do. And I was helping one of my sons. And uh, I had probably 15, 16 years years of it down in Wood, right up right at my home. And I had a place to store it during the winter at the time. And when I bought it, it was guaranteed to last about seven years. And as I say, I got about 16 years or so out of it. My son decided he wanted to buy it. And I was getting to the point where I just thought, well, he got another 13 or 14 on this. <laughs> it was guaranteed for 10 when I bought it. And so uh, I did that. He today is still very interested in boats. But I used to do a lot of going around quite long. That's the other one over there on the other end of town. The reservoir in the state, Hoppy in the State Park? Or? Yeah, we're all built around the Hoppy in the State Park. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Was the boat launch? I spent, I spent a hmm? I was just going to say, was the boat launch um, on Wood Street to get into Lake Whitehall? Oh, was yes. that there? Yeah, very nice one. That's been there for a long yeah, time. It was built since I came here, but there is a very nice one. It's very easy to take care of. There's a lot of water out there that you can go on. Mm -hmm. It's a much bigger lake than people realize. To get into. Were you ever able to swim in that lake? Hmm? Were people ever able to swim in that lake? Swim? Mm -hmm. There was a beach, yes. Okay. So I know today, I guess I it's don't a... know if they still have it down there or not, but there was a beach where you could go swim. Yeah, I think it's a backup reservoir, so it's my understanding now that they don't yeah. allow swimming. Um, I live on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. If you could just go into your family a little bit, your children and school. Uh, my, my daughter was born first, and then uh, my son Christopher and my son Patrick in that volume. And uh, my daughter was. Uh, I don't know exactly how to put it, but there was times she was very, very easy to get along with. And other times, she couldn't give up what she was doing or doing it with. 
and it didn't make any difference to us. To the point when uh, she graduated from high school, she went through his uh, nursing program down at Framingham Union. When she graduated from there, we got invited down to the shindig on a Saturday. And uh, when we found out when we got down there, but she and some other kid from Wisconsin packed all their belongings into her car and just drove away and left. She hasn't been back home since. Mm -hmm. So she's out there, she's got children out there. She doesn't come back here too much at all. And what would that have been in the 1960s, 1970s? Yeah, somewhere in that She moment, graduated yeah. sort of during the free spirit yeah. era when I think a lot of young people and did that. My, my son Patrick, I mean Christopher, uh, he was a little bit shy most of his life growing up. And uh, this one I really got to give a lot of credit to. He uh, went through high school and didn't know, didn't know what in the world he wanted to do. I don't know how he came across this, but he did manage to get an interview with somebody that worked in Boston. Uh, oh, I just got through the name of it. Oh, the, the, the court. You know, the federal court that's on it. Somehow he got a job in the federal court. Right? Well, then, two years after he was there, he came home and he was talking to me one day and I said, well, what do you think of working there? Well, he said, I've been there, well, I think it was about three years he's been there. He has a position. He has 97 people working underneath him. Wow. Wow. And I never thought of this, you know. And uh, he's been there about probably 15 years or more now. You mentioned high school and how he didn't know what he wanted to do yeah, in high school. Right. Your, your children would have gone to the Hockenden High School that is now the Hockenden Middle School up on Hayden Row. Yeah, they went, they went through, went through Hayden Row, they went through Hayden Row, everything up there, all their schools, whatever they did schools up there from zero to the graduate. Mm -hmm. So I would assume the center school, yeah, is their the elementary school. school. Was Elmwood School? Hmm? Was Elmwood School built then? Elmwood, Did they Elmwood, go to Elmwood? was built there. Uh, the one you just mentioned uptown. With the, the, the high school, which yeah. was the new yeah. high school the in the 1950s. Yeah, the new high school was built up there and all the others around it. Mm -hmm. Our newer, yeah. Since. Do you and remember? What they, were, what they were basically intending to do was get all the education up in one area. Mm -hmm. That uh, they didn't completely be able to do that for some reason because they still, as you know, they tried to go down to Woodville within the last year or two. Oh, on Fruit Street. Yeah, that, that fell through, I guess. Yes, yeah. yeah. But as um, uh, far as I'm concerned, the, the three of them come out of the very well educated. Yeah, what, what do you remember about the schools? The kind of courses that they took or the kind of activities your children engaged well, in at, at school? My daughter never kept up to us with too much of what she was doing. And uh, Christopher became, he was second one, very much interested in, in uh, skating and hockey and stuff like that. All right, and where did he skate and play hockey? Well, wherever they, 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 he was on the programs that they had during the school season. And they used, um, well, I'm afraid I just don't remember exactly did, which, which lakes they used. Yeah. That they did go out there. Yeah, I know now, yeah, the kids yeah. play pond Patrick. hockey. <laughs> play pond hockey sometimes on Whitehall or, or at Patrick, the... Patrick, just about any sport that you could think of, he got involved in. Mm -hmm. And he did a very good job of it. Nice. So for a, for a small high school, because I assume the classes were small. small. Was, yeah, because most of those buildings up there weren't there when I came in. Right. And the high school itself was a very small building, right. as opposed to what it is today. But for a small student population, it sounds like you're saying that they offered a lot of sports, yeah. a lot of activities yeah. for the for the, the kids. The population to... has increased considerably. No about that. Yeah. 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 And do you, do you remember in, in the school if they? I know today it's so much geared towards. Um, students going on to college, do you know if back then they had more business programs or commercial type of programs? Yeah. My daughter went to nursing school when she got through. Mm -hmm. 
uh, Christopher went to uh, Suffolk University. Patrick was just happy that he graduated and got on the fire department. All right, so he followed you in, in the fire department. All yeah. right, nice. There's been a lot of changes and so forth. And what? I thought they did three, but they did pretty good for themselves as far as I'm concerned. So happiness schools were good yeah. for your children. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking of, of Main Street and Jean in 60 years how the, the look of Main Street must have changed. Do you remember when, when you came, came here, here what yeah. type of businesses when, were when there? When I first came out here, as you come up out of say uh, Ashland, it looked like a one horse town. Mm -hmm. Not half the buildings that are there today were there, and some of the streets weren't there. Uh, Get into the center of town and starting right at the town hall and going down to where the traffic light is, there was a whole bunch of small independent little stores, including the drugstore, which is still the time. Right. And uh, going out the other end, there was next to nothing. But she didn't have 495 in those days and things like that to what it's you know, developed into what it is today. Mm -hmm. And uh, the police station. You could, well, I don't know if you can picture the firehouse as it is now. But when you look at it from the front, on the left hand side is a small section. That used to be the police station in town. That's what you said, yeah. Until they built the one across the street. Mm -hmm. And now uh, they've, they've doubled this. Well, they've torn down the one they originally built and put this up. So there's been a big increase in that. And as you can see, too, there's been two or three additions to the firehouse since I moved in here. Even the size of the amount of people they've been working on. So yeah. you you mentioned Interstate 495, and I would assume that really changed Hopkinton in a lot of ways. Did you notice? Um, you mentioned earlier that you were an accountant. Um, I'm curious, back in the 50s and the 60s, where your work might have been located, and maybe some of your neighbors were they working fairly close? To Hopkinton, I know now a lot of people commute to Boston, for example. Yeah. But uh, I think when I first came out here, I was working in front in uh, South Park. Uh -huh. I was here and working in South Park. And uh, as the population of Hopkinton was much, much less than it is today. I was always about it. three quarters of the streets are there, weren't even built yet. I mean, you could drive through the center of town, come up the other end, up around where, uh, the, what do they call that new center up there? That, uh, going toward Ashland or going toward Upton? No, no, coming the other way, going towards the other way. Where the price chopper is? Are you talking about by, not, by 495? All, all that down there hadn't been built. Right. And 495 had not been put through town. That's how it's all increased since I've been here. So it brought a, a, so some more quite an increase in the population and the amount of buildings and so forth than, than it was when I first came here. And did you notice more people starting to commute to work? Oh, there was a lot more people yeah. kicking around than there used to be. Yeah. yeah. And do you think that's been a good development for Hopkinton, or? To say the least, I'd say it tripled its size, mm -hmm. well, I guess. And, and do you think that's been a good thing? When you came here and it was really small, did yeah. you like the fact that it was a very small town that didn't offer well, too much? Well, it was much? a big difference for me because I, I came out here from Boston. And I lived in the Rosendale section of Boston. Mm -hmm. And that was crowded. No matter where you were in Boston, you were just in crowded area. I came out here and as I met a girl from from Hopkinton that I ended up marrying. And right after I got married, well, we bought the house we had we had to move in. We moved out here and most the children with the schools and everything was in the So you liked the idea that it was a little bit peaceful and sort of out in the country. Well it was a big difference from the from the city of Boston. Yeah. Believe me, it really yeah. was. So what, I'm sure in the city of Boston there were lots of things to do. What kind of things did you and your family do 
in Hopkinton in your leisure time? Well, we used to, uh, you know, when the kids were growing up and before you have the opportunities that you have today, I've seen a big increase in this town since I've been here. The school system for one thing and where it is and so forth. Uh, we used to just, during the summertime, we'd pack ourselves in the cars and drive up to New Hampshire someplace, spend a week or two up there and come back. Mm -hmm. And uh, watched this, the growth of this town since I've been here has been phenomenal. As far as I'm concerned, quite a bit. A lot of areas around here didn't even exist. Right. As they do today. Right. Did and, uh, Wood Street was a little too lame job. So when you're, I know today I taught at the high school for a while and it seems like so many of the high school students yeah. have cars, but I'm sure back when your children were growing up in Hopkinton, they didn't have their own cars. And um, did they have most of their friends close by to where they lived or did they walk far in town or get on their bike to go see friends? Did I'm wondering, you know, if, how well, far you let them go. They, they didn't have the opportunities that they have today mm -hmm. because they just, wasn't. And uh, we ourselves used to make sure, that especially during the summertime, that we got them the heck out of Woodville and off to somewhere else so they could get to find out what life is like everywhere else mm -hmm. as best as you can. And brought them back down here. And uh, all three of them went through the school system. Mm -hmm. And I've seen the school system, as far as building is concerned, built considerably. I don't know. How long have you been in town? Since the mid-1980s. 1980. Yeah. I've yeah. seen, when we yeah, came here, a, well, there were only lot, three schools. Yeah. yeah, when I first came here, there was a lot more than there is today. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think it's even stopped increasing. Yeah. And what else do you remember when your, your children were teenagers, what they did, like on a weekend, or did they have any dances, or... If they what? Did they have any dances for the kids, or... <clears throat> Periodically, uh, I wouldn't say that the school system itself sponsored dances and things, but some of the churches did and other things. And it was the opportunity was available if they wanted to go. And uh, I can't think of right now. There's one building uptown that used to be nothing but. Uh, I think I know which one you're talking about by the Doughboy. I call yeah, it the PIA yeah, right building, but the whole, the whole, yeah. mm -hmm. I've been told yeah. there was a gymnasium in there. Yeah. The that used to be a wide open thing for a gymnasium and everything, and they had a lot of physical activities for them. Yeah. So. yeah. You mentioned churches. Um, what Were most people church going people when you came here in the 50s, 60s? And do you remember the churches that were here and how they may have changed? Well, they have. They had a Protestant church in Woodville. Would that be Woodville Baptist? Mm -hmm. Would that be the Woodville Baptist Church that's Probably there today? Still is, yeah. mm -hmm. And coming up here, and these are all on the main street, not where they are now. There's a road there. Um, you had, well, coming up through Woodville, you had, I can't think of the church, the name of the church now, but it's there and it's two different. Uh, Types of uh, religion, in it. Yes, that would be St. Paul's, yep, okay. right? And Episcopal, and yeah, now yeah. A Methodist, also, yeah. I believe. Up the center of town, you have what was the high school, which now is just, I don't know what they're going to do with that building, but mm -hmm. still, I think the kindergartens and so forth are in there now. Mm -hmm. That was there. And uh, so the new schools haven't even been built as to what they have today. Uh, they had no school in Woodville. They all had to come up here. And, and they built all that stuff down in Woodville and they're not using it as well as they thought they were going to be able to. And the, um, the church is in the, near the center of town on Church Street. It would have been St. John's. Well, they've changed for still there. Yeah, there were a lot of, uh, probably, I think when I first came out here, there might have been seven or eight different religions. And uh, St. John's used to be around on Main Street, mm -hmm. as it was at one time. Now it's up around the corner. And uh, 
And well, the, the right where the library is, there's two churches beside the library, but I don't know what religions they were. Yeah, I think one of them was St. Paul's Episcopal. I think that was the original location for St. Paul's that then yeah, moved that, down that, that on Wood Street. Once, yeah. And then the church across the common that's now a Korean yeah. church was yeah. the Congregational Church. Like right? the one that used to be they moved down the street. Yes, yeah, down towards Ashland is where it is now. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me see um, other things about Hopkinton that we could talk about. Um, hold on. Yeah. We now have a, a singing group and so forth. And uh, it's not just for town. This afternoon, we're going north up into, uh, into New Hampshire to a nursing home up there that has our former director living up there now. Oh, well, that's wonderful and to give a concert. We're going to go up with about, uh, I think, 16 or 18 people that sing in the books. Mm -hmm. And is this singing group yeah, through the senior center? Uh, the senior center sponsors it as it is now. Yeah. And uh, we meet once a week. And anybody that wants to go up there and join it and become a member of singing group can. And uh, we have probably maybe 20, 25 people, and about 10 of them don't even live in town. Oh, that's wonderful. But they come out and they join us. Yeah. And to me, it's been very, very nice. It's, you know, it's a good thing to do. Did you sing? Were you um, part of a group when you first moved to Hopkinton? Were there any opportunities like that? Did I, did I sing? Back then? Mm -hmm. I, I've been singing ever since I came out here. Though. And was there a group? similar to this that you were able to sing with or did you sing in church or no it was all based out of here and uh, you could go somebody we used to go a lot of places and sing different things mm -hmm. and one thing i never knew when i was growing up my mother i never knew this until she died and passed away oh. even though she had eight children with other kids. She used to sing and dance on broadway before she married my father so that's where you got your talent and uh, we found this out when it came, when they were both gone. We had to clean out the house. Mm. And in her bedroom, in their bedroom, there was one closet sealed shut. We never saw it open. And unfortunately, I wish I had been there this particular day, but I had slipped and I had an accident that I couldn't walk from in a little while. And they all broken up this closet. <laughs> One or two years of history of her singing and dancing on Broadway. That's something. Never, mm -hmm. we never knew it. Well, that's why. Right. Letters from my father to her saying, "Please come home. <laughs> I'd rather have you here." Well, that's why oral histories like this are well, a good idea. So well, that was something when we found it. When you found that out, wow. Well. Well, maybe what we can do now. I know we talked before. You've got some maps of Hopkinton, and you've got some pictures. And um, I think I'm going to stop the camera, but then we'll focus it in on some of those and you can talk a little bit about them. Yeah. All right, if you want to tell them about this picture, George. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that's me, as you can see. This is my son, Patrick. This particular piece of apparatus, this is probably about five or six years ago at this point, maybe longer than that, was bought in 1948 or 49, and it was in service in Woodrow. It still can be driven. And Tommy McIntyre owns it now. Oh. McIntyre owns Tommy owns that. And he's got a beautifully running shape all the time. I wonder if that's one of the vehicles that sometimes we see in the Horribles Parade on the 4th yes. of July. Yep. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Now, so George also has a couple of maps of Hopkinton on his wall showing his interest in the town. Um, this one, George? Did you say 1875? Mm -hmm. In that area. Yeah. It's just Hopkinton and the, the road network, which is quite small compared to today. All right. At that, time, that one right there, that was the morning that the building exploded. And that's the mother of the two children that died. Patrick had gotten her out of the top floor of the house and was on the way over to put her in an ambulance at that point. And that was the house in between 
the oh. fire station and the present Hillers cleaners yeah. that was totally demolished. Yeah, totally demolished. I forget the year, but it was probably 2001, well, 2002, yeah, somewhere 2003, in somewhere yeah. in there, yeah. when yeah. her two little children were not recovered. Yeah. And that's you carrying the mother. And this is another map of Hopkinton, a print from a famous map in 1880 that shows the prominence of churches and lots of farmland on the outskirts. And George's grandchildren are pictured around the edges. Okay. All right. That's mm -hmm. me in high school. Yeah. And that was the date on it says um, uh, 1950, I think. 1950. So, just a few years before you moved to Hopkinton. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just through my history with the fire department, you know, I've dug an awful lot. And to, you know, you look at that from the day, the horse drawn dates, when, the, when the, you didn't have gasoline trucks and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know exactly what part of my life I started, but I just got very, very, very de deeply interested in the firefighting and what you can do to help people mm -hmm. and what they, how much they really need you when you show up. And then occasionally you get somebody that you'd like to shoot <laughs> because they're a little bit too bossy and, you know, everything else that goes with it. But, uh, I've devoted, I would say, a good 40 years or more of my life to firefighting. Basically because I know somebody needs your help. Well, that's wonderful. That's a great legacy, George. That's yeah. a great legacy. Um, all right, this is the end of the June 26, 2013 interview with George Gross. The interviewer was Nancy Clark.